Hear now the story of Christmas, the story of our salvation, from Luke's Gospel, the second chapter, the first 20 verses. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I had the honor going on 10 years ago, I think now, I'm not quite sure exactly when it was, of going to Michigan to see one of my best friend's sons married. I had helped her to take care of him when we were seminary students together at Wesley. And especially I remember when she and her husband had to go to the United Kingdom. Her husband was from Wales for his grandmother's funeral. And I stayed with this little guy when he was just beginning to learn how to walk. Then I got to see him walk down the aisle, and it was a beautiful day indeed. We went to the reception, and as we were sitting there, the time came for the mother and son dance. And he came over and he took his mom by the hand and he led her to the dance floor. And suddenly this very sappy waltz started playing and I thought, what in the world is this? But sort of with a big scratch like in the olden days of record, that song changed. And suddenly there was the London Bach choir singing and the French horn playing a song that I remembered her singing to him when he was a baby. You can't always get what you want. You can't always get what you want. Now, people were confused, but I remember him as a child. He could be a colicky baby, and then he became sort of a cranky little toddler. He wanted a gun for Christmas. She wouldn't let him have a gun. Now, don't worry. She was not impinging upon his Second Amendment rights. He was a toddler. She works for Jesus. Go figure. And I remember the day that I was sitting there having breakfast with them when he bit his Pop-Tart into a gun and shot his mother with it right there at breakfast. But there were times when he wanted something he shouldn't have, or he would get a little fussy and whiny, and she would pick him up, and she would cuddle him, and she would sing to him, you can't always get what you want, but if you try sometime, you might find you get what you need. And that was the song that he chose to dance with her to. By the way, he is now a minister of music working at a church. And this morning, I turned on Facebook, and there he was singing his heart out to Jesus. You can't always get what you want, can you? Think about when you were a kid at Christmas. Now, I had an aunt who did not give us socks and underwear, but she gave us matching dresses. Her daughter, my cousin, put a picture on Facebook for me just last week. It was a little sister just glowing and beaming, and the little thought bubble coming out of her said, I'm dressed just like my sister. Next to her was the older sister wearing the same outfit, and her face was really kind of angry, and her thought bubble said, I'm dressed exactly like my sister. And my cousin put on there, and my cousin. 
You see, she was exactly in the middle between my sister and I, and her mother, even when we were teenagers, could manage to find in the 1970s dresses with crinolines and try to dress us alike. And my mother would say to me every Christmas on the way to grandmother's house, when Aunt Ruth gives you your dress, I want you to smile like you like it, and I want you to say thank you like you like it. I didn't know till later that my cousin had the same dress, but she refused to wear hers. And you all remember Ralphie in A Christmas Story, the movie that we'll be playing 24 hours a day, just starting a few hours from now. Ralphie, who gets from his aunt, the bunny suit. And then their boys are sitting there under the Christmas tree opening their gifts, and between the blimp and the, the rifle that Ralphie has waited for all his life, they open the box and it's socks and underwear, which they immediately throw over their shoulders. No kid has ever in his or her life written down on a list of wants for Christmas, I want socks and underwear. Nobody fights their way through the mall to Santa's lap on those days when you could do it in reality. Now virtual Santa visits. No one has ever said, Santa, I want socks and underwear. But we know that socks and underwear are necessary and we're always grateful when we have them, especially on those days when you realize that you have laundry to do and you don't have anything left in the drawer. Here we are, a very COVID Christmas, if we wanted to make this a Hallmark movie. Wouldn't we call it that, a very COVID Christmas? Nothing is the way we intended. This is usually the smallest service of the year because this draws people out who need to be together. They need to be here in this place. And as I said at the beginning, some of them just cannot handle being here with a crowd of people who are feeling merry when their hearts are breaking. It's hard, isn't it, sometimes, to come to church when you're grieving or when your life seems to just be defined by the losses and not by the gains. And we've had so much loss this year, especially just being together here in this beautiful sanctuary. One of the reasons I'm not standing in the pulpit is so you can see the beautiful display of poinsettias, the angels, the candles, everything that you would love to see if you could be here together. And later in the service when we light the Christ candle, usually from that candle at this service, we light small candles in remembrance. Folks come forward to remember those that they've loved and lost, sort of like we do on All Saints Sunday. But we do it in light of the light of God coming into the world in Jesus Christ at Christmas. One of the years that I did this service, and I've done the service like this for nearly 20 years now. The service that drew the most people was the one in 2016. That was just two months after my husband had died. And I didn't know how I was going to get through that service. And the people who came that night from different churches around, some I had served and some friends of mine from other churches, they didn't come because they were grieving the loss of someone in their life. They were there for me because they knew I needed a community of love and support around me. That's what Christ calls us to be for each other. Christ calls us to walk with each other, to remind each other of what it is to have everything and remind each other what it is, as Paul said, to be hungry and to have nothing because the secret he has found is the one that he shares with them and the one that we share here every time we gather. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Even to the point of letting go of someone you love. Even to the point of being here to celebrate this birth. In the spite of everything we've lost, we know what we have gained in Christ Jesus. One of the best funeral sermons I ever heard was not one that I preached. It was one I heard in a Roman Catholic church in Jarrettstown, West Virginia. The priest said that night, we grieve so greatly because we have been so greatly blessed. And we have been blessed by the people who have touched our lives, even those who have gone on. And as we go through these fearful days, not knowing what's going to happen next, it seems, in the world, we go through it in the knowledge and the love of Christ Jesus. Because we can do all things through him who has our strength. We can embrace the story of Christmas, the real story of Christmas, not the packages, not the lights, not the tinsel, 
not the fruit cake or the eggnog or all those things that we love and look forward to. Because life is not a Hallmark movie and Christmas is not a Hallmark movie. Here I go again. It was a cold, lonely world into which Jesus was born, into a stable, to a mother who had walked in her ninth month of pregnancy as a young girl nearly 100 miles to be registered in a census to pay taxes they couldn't afford to pay. The little town of Bethlehem was indeed a little town on the outside of Jerusalem. And there was no place for them to stay. And so they stayed where the animals were kept. And she gave birth. Without her mother, without any female relatives that she knew, she gave birth. She didn't have a layette for her son, and so she probably tore the bands of cloth, that swaddling bands that we hear about so often, from the hem of her own gown to wrap him in, to lay him inside an animal's feeding trough filled with hay. And when the angels came to announce his birth, they did not go to the princes. They didn't go to Herod's palace. They didn't go to the centurion, the guards of Rome. They went into the fields where the shepherds the poorest among them, keeping watch over someone else's flocks by night. And they announced to them that the world at that moment had changed. There's a lot of pain in this story. In just a short time, Joseph will be warned again in a dream to get up and take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt where they'll live as refugees. They know want. They know hurt, they know cold, they know poverty. When they take him to the temple to present him so that he can do what is right in God's eyes according to the law, they will give the gift of the poorest of the poor, a gift of two pigeons or doves. This is a story for people who are hurting. It's a story of good news. It's a proclamation that God's love doesn't need all the grandeur. God's love doesn't need us to be excited and happy all the time. Because Jesus did not come to make us merry. Jesus came to make us new. And in him we can do all things. So wherever you find yourself this Christmas, whoever you're missing, whoever you're longing to be with, maybe it's just family that you are gathering with by Zoom and aren't we all tired of looking into a camera or looking onto a computer screen to see those we love? But until we can gather together again, either in this world or the world to come, we can do all things through Christ who is our strength, even holding on to the hope that is ours, proclaiming the hope that is ours, sharing the love with which we have been loved, sharing the grace which we have been shown, forgiving others and proclaiming his truth until he comes again. And then you will experience Christmas as best you're able and it will be more than you hoped for, and even more than you could imagine. To the glory of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.